Welcome to the online tutorial for the MATLAB Finite Element Program for solving 2D elastic problems in biomechanics, a program developed by Dr. Michael Miga at Vanderbilt University. In the last session, we introduced the Finite Element Program and showed how to generate a mesh model with material properties and boundary conditions. In this tutorial, we will show how you can build custom mesh designs and use an existing mesh model to create new boundary conditions. In the brain example, the mesh model was created using an interactive tracing technique. In this session, we will show you how to generate more complicated boundary geometries. For example, material boundaries with intersecting edges. Since boundary contour crossover is prohibited, we must use mathematically precise methods of describing the geometry that we wish to model. This will be explained by an example. So let's get started. First, let's consider the shape of a human long bone. Like most materials, bone is inhomogeneous, meaning different parts of the material will exhibit different properties and different mechanical responses. Now let's consider an approximate geometry of the bone. For this example, we will arbitrarily designate three regions consisting of two distinct material properties. If I were to try to construct this mesh as I did in the last tutorial, I would have difficulty tracing the internal boundaries because of the intersecting edges. Since overlapping boundaries cause errors in the program, we must be precise with our point selection. This requires a higher level of precision than what I can trace by hand, so a customizing method is employed instead. To use the custom method, draw the figure in the first 2D Cartesian quadrant and placing the bottom left corner at the origin. Next, mark the X and Y coordinates on every vertex of the image. A vertex is a point lying on the edge of the mesh which either defines the shape of the model or divides the material types within the model, or both. Next, we're going to assign index numbers to each of the vertices. You are now ready to build the mesh in MATLAB. If you wish to run MATLAB and follow along with me, make sure the, cur the current directory includes all of the M files or P files comprising the finite element program. From the command window, we will create a nodes variable and a boundary element variable. The nodes element contains the x and y coordinates of our vertices. The boundary element will describe the connectivity of those nodes and the material regions they contain. So let's start by creating the nodes. Consult your drawing to list the coordinates in ascending order according to each node's index number. Now let's create the boundary element variable. Recall that a boundary element consists of an n by 4 array where columns 1 and 2 contain the indices of connecting nodes and columns 3 and 4 designate the material type to the left and right of the edge as one moves from node 1 to node 2 respectively. Let's create the boundary element variable in MATLAB.
We now have everything we need to generate the mesh model. Remember in session one, we called make mesh using only one input argument, the image itself. This time, we don't have an image to input. So instead, we have a list of coordinates and boundary elements. Make mesh has the versatility to generate a mesh using either of these two methods. The custom me method uses three arguments, an x-coordinate vector, a y-coordinate vector, and a boundary element array. Call make mesh using the three argument form. We will use the first column to designate the x nodes, the second column of nodes to des designate the y coordinates, and our boundary element variable. The mesh model now appears. Now the program proceeds exactly as the one shown during session one. Re review tutorial session one for instructions on performing analysis on the mesh. Also, think about the meaning of the variables. What sorts of analysis can you perform? What kinds of stresses and strains are important for modeling? These are some of the questions to consider. In the last part of this tutorial, we will show how to use an existing mesh model to define new boundary conditions. Consider the brain example we used last time. Remember that all of the information necessary to construct the mesh model of the brain was saved in four files. A node file, an element file, a boundary element file, and a material property file. We then used the boundary conditions to run an impact simulation. Now suppose I want to use the mesh, the same one as before, but I want to see how the brain responds to an anterior rather than a lateral impact. I will need to change my boundary conditions to do this. This can be accomplished using the function new underscore bcs. The input arguments are the image array and the pixel size. Let's do this in MATLAB. First I will clear off the data from the last section. and I'll input the brain image into our workspace. And now I will use the new BCS function to specify new boundary conditions. Again, my inputs are the image and the pixel length, which is one millimeter. Again. And now we are prompted to enter the node file name, and we enter all of the previously saved files from our brain mesh that we created before. As you can see, the program jumps immediately to the boundary condition definition stage. Designate a new boundary condition as, and proceed as before. This time we will use a 10 millimeter compression displacement on the front and fix the posterior boundary.
Now we will enter a new boundary condition file in order to save our unique arrangement. Now let's observe our result. We will use a previous call from our history of the run 2D elastic function, we, but we will make one key alteration, and that is to change the old boundary condition file to the new one, which we saved as brain.bcs2. Now we can generate the new simulation. Let's observe our result. I'll show the original and updated boundaries by adding the displacement values to my original points. To do this, we will use matrix addition and be sure to transpose the variable v in order to perform the matrix addition properly. P2 is now a variable that contains the updated boundary positions. Now let's show those positions. Now we'll display the updated boundary. And we'll color the updated boundary in blue to highlight the distinction. And for one more analysis, let's look at the flow field of displacements overlaid with the stress in the y direction. Uh, okay, we'll create a new figure to do this. First, we'll create the boundary. And now for the flow field of displacements overlaid with the stress in the y direction. That's what we get. So this concludes the tutorial on creating custom mesh models and modifying boundary conditions.